Welcome to the, by now, sixth part of the Omni's training video series, Omni Studio Web Development Basics. Today, it's going to be really exciting as we look at how you can create your own methods and how to write code in Omni Studio. Have fun. In the previous videos, we already did a little bit of coding, but in most cases, it was just one line and without any conditions. So how exactly can I check certain conditions, or in other words, prerequisites or cases, in order to then execute a certain action such as putting out a message? To explain this, I'm back again. You may know it already, in our existing library and go to the remote form Hello World. Because in today's video, I want to add now some additional features via code. But before I do this directly in the code, i.e. in the method editor, I first would like to customize the UI the user interface that we always see in the browser. The button and this entry field here should now work together. And the button should later welcome the user by the name he or she had entered with a friendly message. To make sure the user understands that a name should be entered in the input field here, I simply label it. This can be done here with the label property. So I simply enter name there. We don't need the remaining components that are still in this form, so I'll just delete them. Perfect. Now that we've customized the UI, we can move on to the code. We need two methods for our app. One method should check whether the user has entered all the required information, in our case, whether he entered a name, and the other method should then generate a nice message from the name and display it. To create a new method, I right-click on Class Methods. You can find it here above, and then on Insert Method. As this method should check later on whether something has been entered, I simply call it Check. We now want to check whether the variable iInputEntry, which is linked to the entry field, is filled. And if it isn't, this information should be reported back accordingly. We can use an if statement to do this. This allows us to check a condition, namely, whether the variable is empty. And this works as follows. If, now we press Enter, so that Omnis Studio automatically completes the expression. And now the condition comes directly after the if. Such a condition could be, for example, 1 plus 1 equals 2. As this condition always applies or is true, the code between the lines if and end if would always be executed. For our condition, however, we now type is clear here and put our variable iInputEntry in the brackets. isClear is an Omni Studio function that returns the value true if the specified variable is empty or returns false if it is filled. If the condition is true, the variable is empty and we have to report this back somehow in the code. We can do this by typing quit method and kfalse here. So, we end this method and return the value false. Don't be surprised, in Omni Studio, k true equals true and k false equals false. I think it will become clearer what I mean by return as soon as we create the second method. Okay, and if the variable is filled, we want to return k true. We can do this in the same way as with k false, except that we type in else beforehand, i.e., we say otherwise. And then in the next line, we enter quit method k true. You can now read it all as if the variable is empty, then this here, and otherwise this here. You could also omit the else, and in this case, simply enter the quit method k true below the end if, because if the condition is met, the method is cancelled beforehand anyway, here, and the code would never be executed at this place. So, now we have a separate method that checks whether the required entries have been made. Typically, such a check method checks several cases, and not just one, as is the case here, but this is just for demonstration purposes. The next method should then, in case a name has been specified, insert this name into a record and output it. So, here is a new method. I'll call it greet, as this is what it shall do. 
And right at the beginning of the method, I want to use our check method to check whether we should or can greet at all, or whether there should be a hint that the name is missing. To do this, I call our method with do method, and then I call our method check. To intercept the result or return value of the executed check method, I press tab once while my cursor is still in this position. Then this returns appears automatically. And now we can specify a variable that catches the return value. By the way, the returns could also be entered manually. In this case, I will now specify a variable that doesn't even exist yet, lcheck. And now comes a little trick. While my cursor is still on the variable name of the undefined variable, I press F7, select the type Boolean, and press Create Variable. And so I have already defined the desired variable with the variable name specified in the code. That's cool, isn't it? And this then tells us whether the check reports back K true, which means everything is OK, or K false, meaning something is missing. In order to execute different code depending on the returned result, I will use an if statement again, and the variable with the result of the check as a condition. So, I'll check. And if the value in I'll check is true, so is on K true. We want to put our message out here. I now do this with do dollar c inst dot dollar show message, and the message is now placed in the brackets. However, I don't just want to output the variable or just a text, like we did in the Hello World video, but a mixture of both. To mix variables with hard coded text, I will use the con function. This combines several values, in our case, the value of the hard coded text with the value of the variable, and that works like this con here again in brackets, and now we can specify several values or variables, or similar in the brackets, separated by commas, which are to be connected. For example, hello, space, comma, now the variable with the name, I input entry, comma, welcome to the Omnis community. In case the check failed, a message should be displayed, and else. And here we simply put out the message we already know with do dollar c inst dot dollar show message. Please enter a valid name. That's it. Almost. The last thing we need to do now is call the greet method from the buttons dollar event method. This can also be done quite quickly. Simply go to the dollar event method of the button and replace line two with do method greet. Then, let's test what we have done. Let's assume our name is Max. That's a nice name. And if we didn't enter a name and now press the button, we'll get an error here, which is what we wanted to achieve. Great. That's it for today. That was finally some more practice, wasn't it? If you found this helpful, then look forward to the next video, because there we'll look at how to switch between different remote forms and build a simple login. Hope to see you then. Take care. Bye.